The concept of equilibrium is a little bit tricky to understand. Uh, when we're talking about a chemical system, meaning reactants and products, at equilibrium, um, it's a very theoretical concept. And the reason that it's theoretical is because a chemical system at equilibrium um, shows a dynamic process. Part of that dynamic process, or I guess a result of that uh, being a dynamic process, is the fact that macroscopically, what we can see with our naked eyeballs looks like nothing's going on. Looks like there's no changes to the system happening. Um, and that sometimes makes the concept of equilibrium a little more abstract than maybe our brains are ready to handle. What I'd like to do today is take a look at this demonstration to help model what equilibrium looks like. I have set up two test tubes here. Okay, I've got test tube number one, and it is filled with water with just some food coloring in it. In it. The only reason I put food coloring in there is so that um, we can kind of see the water better than if it was just transparent. Test tube two um, is empty. Crazy. Um, so I've got two graduated cylinders, okay? One, two. I also have two straws, okay? And what I'm going to do with these straws is I'm going to take each straw, I'm going to dip them into, um, into each cylinder, one straw in each. I'm going to cap off the top on both of them. Ooh, this is hard, tricky to demonstrate. Okay, and then I'm going to transfer the contents of each straw. Ooh, see what I did there? Okay, from one graduated cylinder into the other. As I do that, I'm ready. I've got this handy data table that I'm going to keep um, track of the volume uh, in each of the graduated cylinders. Okay, so to start out with, this is very easy. Oh, I guess I've called these test tubes A and B instead of one and two. <clears throat> So the first thing that I want to do is make sure I take my reading test tube B, or sorry, graduated cylinder B, is very easy to take a reading of. There's nothing in it. It's zero. However, remembering that I need to estimate um, the, like, one digit beyond what the measurement capabilities of this, um, of this measuring tool are. So if I bring this in closer, what we have here is this graduated cylinder is calibrated every 0.5 of a mil. So these small ticks here, I don't know how good, how clear this is. These small ticks here represent 0.5, and then the longer lines represent one milliliter. So I'm going to be doing my best to estimate that tenths digit. So when I record the volume for B, I need to make sure I start out with a very accurate reading, 0, 0.0 milliliters, not just zero, okay? Then... When I record my volume for A, I need to make sure I get eye level with the meniscus. And I'm just going to put this paper behind to help me uh, make my reading a little bit more accurately. So this one is 23, I'm going to call it 23.1 milliliters. So that's where we're starting, okay? A, 23.1, B, 0.0. .0. Now, I'm going to do my little exchange. And when I do this, I put the straw right down to the bottom, okay, on both of them. I know you're going to be looking at this and being like, why is she doing that on B? There's nothing in there. Yeah, there's nothing in there now, but there's going to be. So I want to make sure I'm um, doing the same process on both sides. Stop put my finger over the top to stop her it kind of okay transfer over making sure I don't spill any in the process straws out go back take a reading okay let's go with a again Ooh. easier said than done uh, 21 point. 21.1? 21.1? Now, here's the issue. B, 
the first marking on this graduated cylinder is actually five mils. So I can't really take a super accurate reading for B right now, but what I can do is I can do some math. Okay, so I look at my table and I say, oh, well, I took two mils exactly, 2.0 mils out of A. So then the amount that's transferred into B must be 2.0 mils. Okay, there's my first transfer. Well, guess what? We're back at it again. Will every transfer be two mils? I don't know. Let's see. So straws go all the way down to the bottom, stopper them. Up, transfer over, and take our readings again. Okay, A, where are you at? Hmm. 19.5. Nineteen point five, and just doing the math there. Not my strong suit. Five means that I've added one point six mils to B. So I'm just going to say now my volume in B is three point six, and I'm only doing that because I can't take a reading on here yet. It's not marked. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this transfer over and over and over until I get five consecutive readings where there's no change in the volume for A or B. Okay, um, so five consecutive readings. Let's take a look at what that's going to look like. All right, I did it. I have my five, one, two, three, four, five, oh, just double checking, five consecutive trials, these last ones here in my very neat data table. Um, just kidding, this is a rough copy. Um, but these last five, I know they're not identical, okay? But they are very close. They're, I would call this no change compared to all the change happening. Oh, all the change happening here, okay? now. When we take a look at uh, where we are, let's look at what's in uh, the graduated cylinders. Not what's in the graduated cylinders, it's still the same thing, uh, some water with food coloring, but what's the volume of these? And you can see numerically, again, flash this up for you, okay, that they are not at the same volume. So this again was our test tube, sorry, our grad cylinder A and our grad cylinder B. Okay, this is the one that started with everything. This is the one that started empty. They're not at the exact same volume as one another. Not at the exact same volume as one another. Okay, however, their volumes have remained constant for the last five transfers. So they didn't start out at the same volume, and they are not um, when we finish, when we get our five, or five transfers with the same uh, volume, um, they're still not quite the same. Okay, and you can see it's pretty close. I'll give it that. But you can see that there is slightly more in cylinder A than B. Okay, slightly more of the liquid. So now that I have this data, I'm thinking to myself, hey, this is all fun and exciting. But wait, there's more. Okay, all I'm going to do now is I am going to, to test tube A, I'm going to add... Um, just some water. I haven't even measured this out. Oh, hi. There it is. Uh, I have not measured this out. Just going to dump it right in there. So adding more to cylinder A. Okay. Now, I'm going to repeat the same process over and over because now these guys have been, this system, if you will, has been disturbed by me adding some more water. So I'm going to start taking my readings and doing my transfers over and over again 
until I get five transfers, five consecutive transfers um, with no change in volume reading. Here we go again. Okay, exciting news. I did it. Um, here we have, this is the column we're looking at here. Okay, so you can see we started with more um, water in test tube A. Um, and then as the transfers went, we we're able to get five in a row. Um, absolutely perfect. I know I make it look easy, but it actually is very tricky. This one here, a couple of interesting things I want you to think about. When we take a look at the amount of liquid in our cylinders, remember this is cylinder A, which is where we added the water to, cylinder B, okay, where we did not add more water. So we added more water here, but look at how these two volumes have relatively equaled out. Um, that's interesting. How did we add more to cylinder A but we ended up getting more in the end, or proportionally maybe, it's okay to say that, um, in cylinder B. Interesting, interesting. I wonder what happened there. Their volumes are almost equal. I mean, that doesn't always happen. That's not the part that I want you to focus on, but I want you to focus on, hey, even though we added more to cylinder A, we ended up getting more in cylinder B. Wild, what happened? Last thing that I want to discuss is, while the volumes in these two cylinders may not be identical, I want you to take a look at, I'll do a couple more transfers, I'm not writing this down, um, I'll do a couple more transfers, I want you to look at what the volumes in each straw is. So what's the volume in the straw that's carrying water from A to B? How does that compare with the volume in the straw that's carrying water from B back to A. So here we are, here we are. Transfer, hmm, here we are. Looking, splashing water everywhere. This is very hard to film. There we go. Do a couple more here. Amount of water in the straws. Can I move them right next to each other for you? Okay, last one. Just using straws again. Boom. Last transfer. Lots to think about here. Okay, um, just taking a look at how does this help. Um, this demonstration, how does it help us to kind of make the abstract theoretical concept of equilibrium maybe a little bit easier to grasp?